personnel status. Kind of looked that over. Uh, as always, kind of big overtime. We got uh, Alex has got, I think he's got a new hire coming in that's not on here uh, today. And then, uh, of course, the uh, I think we've had a w one or two in a jail, you know, going in and out. But other than that, nothing drastic, nothing, you know, changed on that. Any questions <coughs> on that? Okay. Okay, under number four, board appointments, proclamations. Uh, we have um, our Senator Jeff Mullis. Uh, we do have a proclamation. Uh, you know, he has, has really done a lot of good in Northwest Georgia, but he's really helped us in Dade County also. And and we just feel the need to, uh, you know, to actually uh, you know, commend him on all the work that he done over the years. Um, anyone, anyone got any questions on that? I mean, it's just, a, you know, it's a, a simple thing, but all, all counties, uh, Kind of pooled together here in, in his uh, region, and uh, they've actually did the same thing. And I think they're planning a probably a gathering uh, sometime in the near future to kind of honor him. So uh, everybody fine with that? Yeah, right. Yes. Uh, we also have 4B. This is a proclamation. Uh, the uh, the intellectual development develop developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. What hard to say that fast. Uh, and this is something we've done what for the last what three years, four years, I think. A long time. Been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. And uh, it's just uh, it's something it's you know we feel the need to do and uh, everybody on board with that. Yes. All right. All right. And consent agenda. Uh, 4C the proclamation. Uh, Day Kenny Lions Club. This is uh, Save Your Vision Month, March the 23rd. We've been we've been actually uh, doing this for many many years, you know. And uh, the Lions Club is uh, really a good a good group of people. They do a lot of good in Dade County. And we appreciate them. Everyone, fine with that? Yes. All right. Uh, this is 4D proclamation. Uh, this is a Sexual Assault Awareness Month, on March 2023. 20, uh, uh, we've been also this has been I know at least 10 years. We've We've actually did this proclamation. Any questions on it? Everybody fine with it? Okay. All right. Move down to 4E. This is proclamation uh, social work breaks barriers. Social worker month. Everybody fine with that? Yes, everybody. We haven't had that problem before. Oh, Alex went back and worked on it. Okay, we were on uh, the uh, 4E, so everyone's fine with that? Yes. That on the, okay, consent agenda. All right, let's move down to number five. This is our capital equipment uh, purchase, if any. I don't have anything. You don't have anything on that this month. Believe it or not. <laughs> All right. I know, Robert. <laughs> it's only when Ted's gone. Yeah. I know, but Robert. <laughs> that's right. I, I know. I know. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, a little bit cheers on that. Uh, move down to number six. This is our approval of a uh, of our ARPA expenditure. Uh, tonight we have Dade County IT upgrade for Dade County Sheriff's Office. Uh, this is for the video evidence server and software upgrade. Alex, you want to go ahead and give us a briefing on that, please? Sorry, it's kind of hard to hear back here, and we're trying to turn it up a little. So, uh, as you know, we Tommy presented, Major Bracker presented, and we're, um, got a upgrade in the video cameras that's in the new cars, and we're running through this with the city as well. Uh, the city, the watch card system we've been on for the last 10 years is technology is changing as we're in. Uh, and the current server that we have at the sheriff's office, we found out after we approved the uh, camera for the new car, and we also ordered three for the city, and we try to parallel this to keep the pricing down. We've got to move to up to a Windows server to, uh, 2019 or better, an SQL server of 2019 or better, and uh, Microsoft SQL. 
we're on 2012 currently on the server that's got the watch car system that we have for the sheriff's office. The hardware itself will not take the new operating system or the new SQL operating system. <laughs> Currently, we've got nearly 30 terabytes of uh, data that uh, body cameras and the car cameras have uh, on them. So the proposal is from our current vendor that uh, we were working on some pricing from CDWG. But Lightfoot is our uh, company that is our IT engineering that we've always used. And they also have a company they resell through. And this was their quote to us. We're still waiting on the CDWG pricing based on the criteria on the left, not the unit pricing. So the server, uh, Windows Server 22, 16 core, uh, SQL standard uh, 22. We have to have five Cal units of Server 22. Uh, the Synology Bay, which is the hard drives that holds the terabytes, and then we need, it's eight slots, so we're gonna do eight 12 terabyte slots. Uh, the rail kit for the, uh, putting it on the server rack, and then some of the um, Intel 10 gigabyte NIC card, which talks to the network that we need. So that total price is $14,096.10. All the install will be done by us. This is just hardware and software. And this is our government rating software that we're getting the pricing on. Did you, uh, now, I know you, another reason you went to, with this was no, no bids. Uh, well, we account, usually uh, with CDWG, we try to go between them and Lightfoot. And Microsoft is Microsoft. We're getting the same take price on that. It's just the hardware. <coughs> like the server itself with everything in it is $4,700. And then the standard pricing on the Windows Server 2022 uh, SQL and clients, that's the thing. Your, then your other biggest cost is the hard drives. The, 12 terabyte hard drives are three, $453 times eight, which is $3,600 for that. Okay. Then the rail kit and the NIC card, which talks to the network. So we have been on this system probably almost six and a half, seven years uh, when we went to the watch guard. Uh, it's been through three upgrades of versions with watch guard, version two, three, and four. We're currently on four. And with the next technology, you're moving to a Microsoft Linux based SQL is what it's moving to. So that's different and we gotta have the hardware to handle it. Ms. Hartline, you got a question any questions on that? Uh, Ms. Bradford. So will will your when you transfer everything over, will the We're older not stuff? transferring over because it's six hundred dollars a terabyte to transfer, and we've got over thirty. So you're going to just replace? We're going to re put a new server in, leave the old one up, and the, and run and get them to pull any criminal everything that they have for courts and stuff. They've already pulled and uh, burnt. Yeah, okay. But we will keep it up as long as we can, so it's not and it's not on the World Wide Web, so it's not getting hit. It's just internally into that. Yeah. yeah. I understand. So we're talking with Tommy. Anything that they feel they need through investigations or officers will get pulled. Yeah. But the day we cut everything, the existing watch guard cameras, body cameras, and the one new one will go on to the version 5 on the Linux base. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't feel spending the data conversion because yeah. it's too much. Yeah. And Sometimes we run into problems and we don't get what we need. So it's sooner to just let the life of it run on out. And when Microsoft Server 12 is coming for end of life. Yeah, that so, was my concern. Yeah, 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 yeah I got yeah. you. Hopefully, we've asked them to start pulling and saving. So if we got a, if it's saved, we can save that drive on our file server. Sure. And the player's still there, so we'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. Robert, you got anything? Any yeah. questions? Okay. All right, appreciate it. Yep. Let's go ahead and put that on consent agenda then. All right. All right, number seven. This is our historic courthouse uh, restoration project, Jamie Blevins. Uh, is Jamie here tonight? I don't see him. I don't see him. Okay. He didn't. There is a uh, report. Okay. We'll be, he'll be back in here next, next month then. All right, number eight. Uh, this is resolution R-15-23. Uh, this is the abandonment of a wooden be filler road as part of the day County <coughs> road system. Any more discussion on that by their commission? Everybody fine with that? All right, put that on the consent agenda. We got it. All right. Move down to number nine. 
Resolution R-16-23. This is our GDOT, uh, Georgia Department of Transportation grant, uh, section 5311. This is for our public trans transit procurement policy update. And uh, yeah, Don, you there. wanna? Yeah. <clears throat> Annette's back there if you wanna. It's, uh, yeah. well, I don't see her. Yeah. She didn't. You wanna come up here, Annette, and talk to us about this? Or you, uh, about the procurement? Mm -hmm. I mean. Well, this procurement is going to be revised and updated. There's nothing you want to add then. I mean, that's we, we, okay to the people. We know kind of what's going on, but I didn't. Well, you want to? That's fine. So what it is is yeah. Georgia Department of Transportation requires us to review it about every three years. We did review it. They had a brand new policy. Unfortunately, it went from our seven pages to eighty pages or something. It's ridiculous. I read it and it's horrible and. Um, but the big thing right now in ARPA, as far as that, as far as federal funds, is buy America. You, we got to make sure we are buying America first. That's big, and all everything coming down the pipe. GDOT even now is getting a stickler on that, um, which is a great thing. I mean, there's no problem with that. It's just, you know, but sometimes you, things are like chips may be made in China, but the end product, maybe GMC or something. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. yeah. but that was the biggie, though, that that I read through and saw that changed. That you got any questions, Phil? You know, okay. Good. All right. Put that on consent agenda. You, you're all right with it, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bradford? Okay. Yes. All right. Move down to number 10. Uh, this is uh, <coughs> our resolution R-17-23. This is our adjustment of our scale house rates and recycling center at the transfer station. Uh, Billy Massengill, come up. I'm going to talk to us here a little bit. Uh, maybe not so much about the rates, but the recycling, but the rates, you know, let's, uh, we had a meeting um, first of this, well, actually middle of the month, I guess she came in, and uh, of course our, our rates are going up because, uh, you know, our cost uh, is going up uh, with the uh, people we do, do business right. with. So yeah. it's just a wash. Go ahead, Billy. I'd like to talk to y'all a minute about our recycling. Uh, for the past 15 plus year, we have bidded, which is now Greif against West Rock, which used to be Rock 10. Greif is closing the door March the 25th. There'll be no more in business. We got nobody to bid against to get the most. Right now, newspaper brings zero. We don't get nothing out of it. Cardboard, $5 a ton. Plastic, a penny a pound. And I just need a little guidance. I mean, it's not looking good. I don't know how you want to go about it, but when you What, the, what are you looking at? What are we losing a year, you think? I'm, what, I mean, pretty, much pretty close to as far as at the rate we're going, you know, it's going to wind up. We're going to be wind, we'll probably in another year we, we'll be paying people to take it, to take it, right? I mean, as far as cardboard well, goes. And, we will uh, be. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. well, right now it's costing approximately 92000 about correct, a few hundred dollars off to run it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's just can't get used to. We could get, I have seen it above $160 a ton. Now it's only $5. Load of cardboard, it don't run low 30 to upper $40. It's what it's going to bring us. Or it used to bring $1,000 or better. Mm. Plastic used to be five to six cents a pound, one cents a pound if we can get them to take it. We have been turned away from West Rock. Now they're the only player. I mean, they ain't gonna pay nothing for it. They're the only one in town. Yeah. What does it cost to take a load to them, a trailer load? I mean, you know, roughly. Eighty-two dollars. Seventy-seven, eighty-two dollars. That's what it costs to get a load of haul. <laughs> so we would be losing fifty, fifty or sixty dollars. That's just on transport. Just transporting turn. So this fuel. That'd be fuel and labor to get it hauled up there. No, 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 no wear and tear. There's no maintenance on the truck, no wear and tear. 
That is, if we got a pretty sunny day and the birds are chirping. I know you don't <laughs> laugh about that. How many in here can go to Chattanooga and back without getting in traffic down? That's perfect timing, if we got no traffic down. Last load, Johnny hauled off four hours. Took him four hours, got caught in traffic. We can't come around the old road. We can't get under the underpass. Yeah, I mean, you can't can come through wall hatch you, but you don't know that until you get hung in traffic. It's always, I wish I would have had. I mean, it's not good. Well, this is a discussion, Billy. I know it's been going on for a long time yes. I know between me and you and probably you and some of the other commissioners and the chairman. You know, there was a place in Chattanooga a few years ago that would take our glass if we would pay them. We used to donate them to bring it and bring it to them. We paid labor and all to keep it up and get it hauled up. We would donate it to them. It got to the point they wanted us to pay them pay to them. take it. Well, that's what's going to happen with cardboard. And it's going to happen with plastic mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. And I know there's some that say, well, why don't we branch out further than Chattanooga? Then you're still taking it, you know, the if, closest, if there's somewhere to go. The you, closest place now. Go past uh, Rocky Face, Walden Avenue, the next exit, then the one after it on the south part of Dalton. You don't double your haul bill to take it. Are they paying any more for it, Tom? No. Oh. Same company just closed in town. Oh. Drive. They don't try to keep that open. This is not a Day County problem. It's ain't in North Georgia. This is all over. Out west, you're paying. Uh, 30 to $40 a ton to be able to donate your cardboard. Same way up north. In Dalton, close to it, you're paying uh, 10 to $20. Dalton, which everybody knows, car Carpet World Capital, the cores that carpet come on, y'all probably seen the fiber cardboard, and it's only 70% fiber, and they had to pay 10 to 20 ton Ten twenty dollar a ton just to be able to donate there. And it's coming to us. Well, we had, you know, Monica Mosley with Republic was in here a few years when China quit taking. Yeah. Used to be China Mosley. China they used to buy it. all the recycling or the majority from Chattanooga. Now they have quit. I mean, it's it's not a pretty picture coming. I don't mean to be the buyer of bad news, but it ain't going to be perfect. <laughs> well, it's, it's not now. I mean, it's not It's not pretty now. I mean, No, it's not feasible right now to do it. On a, on a monthly basis, how many tons of, how many tons do you haul off, roughly, in recycling? All together, all of them. Yeah, I'll give you the number you need out of a cardboard, maybe two and a half containers. Each container will run anywhere from six ton to maybe nine so you could figure maybe seven and a half eight ton times two and a half then on uh plastic plastic we don't get maybe one and a half which a load of plastic right now i'm bringing 20 20 something dollar still cost seven seven to haul it off but then on uh plastic and there's no rhyme or reason on how much comes in you might go down there today you can't see it so much come in. But in plastic, we usually haul off one, one and a half load. I think Don might have a sheet on all that telling load for Rebecca. We can get, we can get it to yeah, the commissioners next week. Yeah, we can pull it and save it. Yeah, we, we have, we, we've got the number. I mean, we've been working on all the numbers. We we've went. had it. Um, this is not the first time it's, you know, come up. So we're, we're really trying to, Working. You're trying to figure it up, Phil. Yeah, I know. What, I, what I'm saying is, that it's if we quit spending the 7,600 and quit taking in the recycling and put it in our trailers and haul it off, we're gonna we're gonna save. It's gonna cost us about <coughs> 800 dollars a month, which costs us 7,600 dollars to recycle. Yes, so you're big close. Well, but on the on, other hand, on that though, you're still if you're just taking it back and putting it in there you're still there those fees are still there's still some back end fees that you're coming across um, what what you're not saying that simple what you're saying most of our cardboard right now is coming from business used to all your business the majority of them had a bailer they bailed it yourself they made the money 
there's no money to be made. Guess what they're doing their cardboard? They're We're losing money. money. Let's give it to Dade County. They bring it to us because they can't get nothing out of it. That's the problem. Uh, no huts and water. They used to, uh, not huts and water, but uh, I yeah, IWG one and also uh, the <laughs> bull moose. They used to set it out, people. I guess y'all remember Mama Duke, how you go. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. People would come by down there. This is just up to lately. They'd take rope. They'd stack it out. They'd band it up and haul it off. They won't come get it. Now they had to pay BFI to take the cardboard off. But if we started charging businesses that bring it in, which they bring in the majority of your cardboard, if they come in and paid across the scale, we wouldn't be losing money on the cardboard. Well, that's easy to fix. Yeah, that's what that's I. Not, that's not. I mean, that's what we. That's what we appreciate you telling us this, but we got. We're gonna have to do that. I mean, it's uh, because we're getting it not only from Dade County. They're bringing it in from other places because we take it for nothing, right. and it's mm -hmm. costing us a hundred thousand a year of our taxpayers' money. I mean, well, you know on I mean? the average, <laughs> in the past, we've uh, what did you know, low twenty we've made. But it costs 96 to do it. <coughs> 34 was the maximum, but tw 20s is the 22, mm -hmm. 25. And this yeah. was back when they was bringing 150, 100. We used to get $1,000, $1,200 out of newspaper. Yep. Now we get zero out of it if they take it. Now, I don't know if West Rock's going to take it. I don't leave me but one option with it. I mean... Yeah. Which it is well, by we, ha grade. we have to too. We have to come with a happy meeting. It is a service um, that we offer, so we have to have some type of a, a okay balance middle part. Uh, so whether it's charging, figuring out that what that fee would be to charge, um, you know, making sure that that goes that charge and that they go to the recycling and it goes to where it needs to go. Um, we've got to come up with a, a middle place where we're not losing out as much as we are. I mean, it's not a pretty picture. I, I don't know the answer. That's, well, that's why I'm here to you. ask. Appreciate you, you know, bring that to us, and we'll we'll uh, we'll act accordingly. Yeah. Um, now this resolution though is still. Passing on the fee that we That's just right. got paid. Yes. Oh yeah, this is yeah, this is something we need to. Yeah, you could add the commercial a commercial fee. True. I think we need, to, we need to come up with that number, but I, th I don't I don't think a commissioner would have a problem with. It. We got to do something. I mean, it's so, not right to do. You can't spend three dollars to make one. No. Yeah, and my, and more three dollars to lose. Right. No, and my suggestion would be that it would definitely be under what what the tons or pounds right now going across the scale, so it is considered recycling. Because if you go over that amount, then they're just well, going to... County residents are subsidizing local businesses to dispose of their cardboard. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's what we're doing. We're paying, yeah. that's right. we're paying the bill. I mean, the that's property right. taxes. That's yeah. not subsidizing. That's not going to be Yeah. But we'll go ahead on that as we have it here and on the adjustment scale house, okay. and we'll do some serious... Uh, you know, numbers between now and next month, we'll have, we, we, we need to, we're going to have to do something, we're going to have to go, okay. we'll have everything in order, so is everybody fine with this uh, resolution, R-17-23 yes. on the scales? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm not fine with it, but. <laughs> yeah, but what do you do? <laughs> well, we've got a, it's a business, it's a business yeah, decision for the uh -huh. county, just like everybody else, and you can't continue to right. lose the money that we're losing on that. And I appreciate people, I know that people have different passions. I appreciate people who are big, but mm -hmm. I don't like those people. I mean, we've got to educate them that, like Billy said there, if you, and what Philip has put in, you're spending $3 to make $1. Yeah, oh, you're going I, yeah, in the you, hole every, yeah, I every agree. day. I'm talking about with yeah. the, the pounds going across going up, but that's just the way it goes right that's now. That's only cardboard, though. That's not the yeah. glass and the plastic and everything else. It's We're still making nothing on any recycling. and. and we knew that was coming when Monica came, mm -hmm. and we talked about China was going to stop taking it. We knew this would come, and it's been about three years in the making. So. Okay. All right. Uh, Y'all got anything else you want to add to the, the Brooks? If not, we got uh, two different people that wants to talk to us tonight. Mr. Faircloth here, y'all want to talk to us. 
I've got, you want to come on up here? Uh, this lady called me and want to be on her work session. Uh, come up on the mountain here. She's got just a little issue she wants to talk to us about and bring it before our, bring it to our attention and tell us who you are and, and we, where you live. Uh, okay. So. My name's Cindy Dentsy and I live in Wildwood. Okay. Um, two concerns. The first one is the safety of my grandchildren when they come to visit. This is, I'm scared. Um, the neighbor's dog has been very menacing to my grandchildren on three occasions because every time I mentioned it, then he went Pick up just a little bit. You're going to have to speak up a little, little bit into the mic because yeah. I'm having a hard time hearing you and I know the people every, on the board. Everyone yeah. I spoke to said, there's no leash law. There's nothing that can be done. And so I didn't do anything. But then after the second time, I was ready for the dogs. The third time I had pepper spray. So sure enough, he came acting menacingly, tried to nip one of them the first time. But this time I thought, mm, I'm going to make sure that they don't. So um, I sprayed it while the neighbor daughter came up the driveway and said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and grabbed the dog and took it off. I said, thank you. I don't know why he does that to children. Mm. I've never had a problem with the dog. But anyway, so I thought that was... Um, my only recourse, well, went and told her thank you for putting the dog up because I had the grandkids for six days. She slammed the door in my face, so now we've got Hatfields and McCoys going on, kind of. It's bad because there's other issues. Um, but um, the dogs are also a nuisance because they run free. They um, are making trails in the woods up behind my house, which is causing some erosion. Mm. which can cause washing, blah, 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 et cetera. Um, and, I mean, if, if there isn't a leash law, then they don't have to fence in their yard and keep their dogs up. But I, you did tell me that if I call you guys... We have a vicious dog ordinance here, and mm -hmm. we enforce strictly. You know, I mean, he's never yeah. bit yeah. any of us. They, they just have to show aggression. Well, and then, it sounds yeah, like yeah. he's yeah. sniffed. Like, well, he nipped at him, and I grabbed my grandson well, back. And the neighbor, the owner of the dog, was standing there at the time. She said, I don't know why he does that. Yeah. And I said, well, I don't either. Well, that was the very first incident. Then the other incident, he chased my granddaughter into the house, barking menacingly. On your property? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then the third time I had the pepper spray, and I, I ushered my grandkids into a little storage building that I had open. Yeah. So they're angry. Um and the thing is, even if they come out, will they take the dog if the incident is over and done and the only person they'll that make, saw it? They'll make a report, uh, uh, they'll interview you, and then they'll go to the dog owner, and they'll, they'll make that determination. That day. When I say they, the deputy, the, the law enforcement people, and normally, yes, if they, they'll, they'll take the dog and, uh, and they'll keep it. I mean, because it, it just seems they, like a They will actually, uh, uh, and if the owner gets the dog back, of course, the, the questions will be if, it, if it's had rabies shot, they'll do an investigation. And and if the uh, owner uh, does get the dog back, then uh, they're required to keep that dog. If it happens again, you know, the dog's gone. Yeah. I mean, okay. so, no, it's serious. I mean, because we have it. We have calls, you know, quite a bit about it. But as far as the leash law is concerned, that's been talked about over the years, you know, and, it's, and, and we're still... You know, very rural in this county. You know, and it's uh, mm -hmm. to get to. You know, you mentioned the petition. You know, and that's something you could do. You could go out and just see how many people you're going to get to sign it. But you'll be surprised how many people that won't because there's so many people got cattle dogs, they got dogs. You know, hunting dogs. But it, it's something. You know, if you want to do that, we'll be glad to look at it. Okay. You know? Well, yeah. my point is, people don't let their cows walk and poop in your yard where you have to step in it and mow. You know, I mean, yeah. let's just be realistic. Yeah. Other animals are kept up. Mm -hmm. And I know people consider cats and dogs pets, and that's not livestock. But yeah. my other issue is okay. if they are dumping construction material on their property, and I have to see it when I'm in my woods, it's unsightly, number one, and number two, it can decrease my property values. Mm -hmm. And the answer to that is... No, you know, if that construction debris comes off of their property or their household garbage in the state of Georgia, and this is a state, different states are different, they can bury it on their property. 
they can they can put it on their property. But if it, if they bring anything from outside, you know, they're about in violation of a Georgia statute. Which well, it's, is a, yeah. it's been like they have a construction company. They run out of their home, and they brought the deconstructive material and put it there, like lumber and brick and mm -hmm. and concrete. Did it come out of their house? Or did it come no. out? So no. it came off side. Off their trailer. No, I can. You call me. I can. I can handle that. I've got a. Yeah. Uh, and the, the only thing I was concerned, I knew what they were doing. They're trying to raise their property up uh -huh. from that bank so they have more parking because we've had parking. Well, see, they can do that with the right material. That's not a problem. But not if you're talking about property. construction, they have a, the solid waste division of EPD, and, and uh, we deal with him. I've dealt with him three times this week on some stuff that's happening, and uh, you can't do that. And, and that's a state. That's not a county, that's a state. Well, their plan is they're going to put, but it's been there for over a year. Mm -hmm. and they did have a couple of mattresses out there for several months, but they've hauled those off. And they, their plan is to put um, chert mm -hmm. and red clay over the top of it so it'll pack down all that yeah. debris. If you'll get uh, get with me tomorrow, I can I can uh, just get a physical address on it and we can, I can start that process. And they'll come, they'll come up next week and that you evaluate it and and it because it doesn't matter if it's brought you, you know you you can feel your own property as long as you as long as it's dirt and even concrete and stuff you know as long as it's uh, approved but you know when you take st construction debris it's not you can't do that it's just you, can, you can't even yeah. take a tree mm. once a tree mm. leaves a property mm. and goes on a highway it yeah. cannot go back on somebody else's mm. property mm. it has to go to, has to the uh, transfer station Thank you. Okay. Thank I you. appreciate I you coming tonight. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Faircloth, you want to talk to us tonight? Oh, I'm sorry. And I didn't. I'm not overlooking you. You're, you're Miss Faircloth to me, but you know, you're, you're the little sister. Chris, yeah. Right, y'all. Well, Mark told me to make a presentation, so. He uh, he didn't know. He was kind of, it's an family thing, emergency there. He had to leave. And, yeah. So it's, uh, That's what we're wanting to build. Uh, it's in Wildwood, um, Carroll Road. Or did I give you one? Um, a wine venue, not a wine, not a wine vineyard, but a wine venue. That makes sense. We do wine tastings, and you um, you can sip the wine, drink the wine, and also purchase a bottle of wine. Plus, we'll have food too. And you're you're going through the uh, alcohol. I mean, I know you've already. Yeah, yeah. I, I put an application over there. I kind of got ahead of myself. Um, I was supposed to have the soil test back, and the guy did not show up last week. So I'm kind of waiting on that to see if I can even get approved for septic and all that. I know the soil's good, but I don't know how much. Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem all over. <laughs> yeah. So. But I mean, if it's not, I have another location that I'm working with a guy that can possibly build there. It's still in Wildwood, also. <coughs> Any questions, Cartland? You said on Carroll Road. Carroll Road, yep. What is as far as foods? What kind of foods are you going to have? Food. Well, it's still kind of up, like we were talking earlier. I've got the guy from St. John's, Josh Carter. He's got me a chef um, to, because I don't want to own a restaurant. Um, he's so wine is like a big deal, you know, and so they do uh, food and wine pairings. So he's working with this, or he's got me a chef that will put together a menu that will pair with wines. And I don't know what that is yet, though. You gonna do the craft beer as well? well yeah, the craft beer, we thought we'd add that also because, you know, sometimes you go out with your lady friend or your wife or girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, and some people don't like wine. So, you know, we thought we'd have a few craft beers. You wanna, are you gonna wanna just sell wine, bottles of wine or? Craft beer as well. Just, well, the That's craft insane. beer is just for on-site consumption. Yeah, the bottles of wine is for, so you can take home, but you also can drink it, consume it there too. And this is actually, you know, he's he's giving this to us for information. You know, his process, he's already started process as far as. You know, that's that's our uh, alcohol board. You know, they do that. They go through the process. They look at everything. And then they'll come back and they'll they'll either recommend or not recommend or whatever. We'll have another night with them here to uh, you know I guess make the final you know I mean it comes down to it. But uh, it's good to come you know to you know up front and show us kind of what yeah. Well, going I just on. want to show you that you know it's not going to be nothing cheap. It's going to be a really nice establishment. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to showcase a lot of the history that we have here. Like I've talked to you in your office. 
Mm. And some of the stuff. Yeah, I like really, the pictures. Yeah. You know, yeah. some of the stuff's yeah. really cool we have here, and I like to showcase that as art on the walls. Yeah. Ms. Bradford, you got some cool, any questions? I, I think it sounds great. I, I I hope that it goes through, the process goes well for yeah. you. And well, one thing we we went on a uh, wine tour last Friday in Georgia. In Georgia, the, actually, they have this. Uh, let's see, it's called a passport, wine passport. So the state of Georgia, or not through the state, but it's a 501c3, and they have over 40 wineries on their list, and you go get them stamped, just like a passport. And we could be added to this list for, you know, not as a, as a vineyard, but a wine tasting establishment. Yeah, well, that's yeah. cool. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Golf, you got anything? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Appreciate you know, okay. coming and bringing yeah. this to us. And Any uh, questions, yeah. let me know. Yeah, I mean, we'll, I'm, I'm yeah. excited to we'll see be, uh, how the process goes because I was kind of a part about that earlier. So yeah. so uh, keep me informed on how that process goes. The, the beer, board beer board side, yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> You'll be, uh, your main entrance is going to be, uh, it's going to be off Carroll, right? It's Isn't that what Carol. you said? Yeah. Come down so, on the, yeah, yeah, our property, um, it meets Highway 11. But the entrance is on Carroll, yeah. and we do have those crossing arms. I know it's a railroad right there, but we do have the crossing arms. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. And right. it's on down further. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, you got anything else, Mr. Hartline? Anything you want to bring? For? All right. You got anything? Anybody? I'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll adjourn our, our work session here for maybe five minutes or so, and then we'll come back and go into our, our regular. But if you don't have anything else, Robin, you no. got anything? Okay. So let's go ahead and we'll move on here in just a minute. Okay.